Hi, and welcome to the Modern Persian Food Podcast. We are food bloggers, Bita Arabian and Bita Nazim Kelly, and we're here to share with you the rich flavors and fresh ingredients of Persian cooking and how to incorporate them into today's modern lifestyles. We're excited to introduce you to the flavors, tastes, and techniques we use, and also our own cultural stories and perspectives growing up in the U.S. in a Persian family. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode number 16. And today we're going to be doing things a little bit differently. We are going to be deep diving into one single recipe, which is one of our favorites. It's a choresh, choresh the fis and jun, made with walnuts and pomegranates and your choice of meat. And we're going to be talking just about choresh the fis and jun today. It's one of our favorites and we want to share it with you. And I'm here with Bita Jun. Hi, Bita. How are you? Hi. Hi, Bita. I'm excited to talk about one of the Persian classic iconic dishes in our modern version. Yeah. Do you remember eating Khorish of Fesenjun growing up? Yeah, my grandma used to make it. It was one of the favorite dishes that my grandma used to make. I remember her stirring it at the stovetop. And I just remember it being like a very sweet and rich and comforting stew. So Khorish in Farsi means stew, but it's stew in the sense of something saucy that you eat with rice. Mm -hmm. This is definitely up there with my absolute favorites. Yeah, me too. How about you? Did you grow up eating it? I did. I did grow up eating it. But I have to say that when I was younger, I wasn't as big of a fan of it. I think I went through waves of liking it and then not really liking it. And to be honest, I think sometimes the visual appearance of Horsh of Fisenjun can be a little intimidating. So I think that's really why I kind of went in and out of liking it. But now as an adult, it's one of my favorite things. And I think it's just such a special Persian stew. I think one time you referred to it as it looks like a mole. I think that's definitely spot on in the way that it looks. It's a rich brown color, thick sauce that you serve over rice. And we mentioned that you can make it with poultry, you can make it with chicken. Some more traditional recipes actually make it with duck. You can make it with little meatballs. You can really mix it up to whatever protein that you prefer to have in it or not even have protein in it. And I've actually seen it before served with salmon. And that was really fun too, as like a different way to make it. Yeah, I haven't yet tried to make it vegetarian. I might. Mm -hmm. But just a side note that walnuts do have protein. (laughs) Yes, you're right. You meant the meatless version. Yeah. But I know what you mean. I have seen versions of it in terms of aesthetically what it looks like from a like light beige color Uh all the way into like deep brown and even into like rich dark burgundy or almost like reddish colors of pomegranate depending on Uh the ingredients the way that the home chef makes it or the restaurant chef makes it yep I know what you mean like sometimes it looks kind of gross yeah and now that I'm an adult and I make it and I know what's in it I'm less intimidated by it the ingredients are beautiful, rich, you can vary them up, whether you toast the walnuts or not. And depending on how much pomegranate molasses you use, it's going to affect the color of it. And also to your point, different people make it a little bit different depending on what region they're from. So the color and actually texture of it can vary from region to region and from household to household. Yeah, so I think it's okay to mention that To be quite frank, I didn't grow up learning to make this stuff like at the ankles and feet of my grandma and my mom. I grew up eating it for sure. I know what it's supposed to taste like. I know that I like it and I have fond memories of it. But I've had to kind of experiment and teach myself and learn how to make many of these things as I'm going. And I think the cool thing about that is that I can make versions that are faster and easier with ingredients that are accessible, and I can lighten them up and make them work for our current way of eating, which tends to be Mm -hmm. healthier than some of the traditional versions that may have a lot of added sugar or oils. I remember actually versions of Fis and June growing up when we would be like at a party or something like that. The more oil that it had sitting on top of the Khorisht, the more acclaimed it was. It was like, oh, it really had the oils release or something like that. Yeah. I was like, uh, should I be eating that? Some of that oil comes straight out of the walnuts. Walnut is an oily 
nut. Yeah. You know, that's a nutritional Mm -hmm. type of oil. Another piece of it that can be manipulated would be like the sugar. So yeah, people use anywhere from like a quarter cup of sugar up to like a whole cup of sugar in their recipes. However, some cool things of modern day, you know, you can use date syrup, There are pomegranate molasses out there that don't have added sugars that have dates. You can also use honey. I'm experimenting with using honey in my recipe. And Mm -hmm. the other thing is how sour or sweet you like it. Right. How do you like yours? You know, I like it to have a balance of sweetness and tartness. So torsho shirin. I like it to have a little bit of both. I don't like it too sour and I definitely don't like it too sweet. So it's nice to when there's like a balance of the tartness from the pomegranates uh, or the pomegranate molasses balanced out with the sweetness of it. And it's one of those that is just like people who are getting introduced to Persian food. Once they have it, they really understand the uniqueness of Persian cooking and ingredients and flavors. Yeah, there's something like rich and sultry. Yeah, almost sexy about it. And maybe not what it looks like. But I've been opening up a lot of pomegranates lately for this dish and various dishes. I like using Uh pomegranate arils as garnish. They're so beautiful. But when you're opening a pomegranate, I'm like, wow, this is like a very sensual, sexy fruit. (laughs) I don't know if I'm imagining, but I feel like it's also sort of like an aphrodisiac. And there's something just like so (laughs) sultry about this rich decadent dish yeah we can bring it back for valentine's day yeah maybe that'll be a perfect valentine's day dish it is our sweet and sour dish and i like it sour so i like to kind of splash in a little bit of cranberry juice and lemon juice oh you add lemon juice to it too yeah i squeezed in a whole fresh lemon so we're blessed with citrus trees in our yard i have a lemon tree and an orange tree oh so great so i put some lemon juice in there You're playing around with making it all in one pot in an instant pot. Yes. I know the traditional version, folks like to use Dutch ovens to brace their meat. It is traditionally a meat-based stew. And, you know, browning and braising the meat is something that some people like to do. But I like to take shortcuts with the instant pot. I toast the walnuts for sure. I love toasting nuts. Mm -hmm. It enhances the flavor. It brings out even more nuttiness. So I will just toast all the nuts. I used about two cups of walnuts. I use my toaster oven. I just line it with tin foil. It's fast and easy, but you can certainly do it in the oven. It just takes between like maybe five and eight minutes, keeping an eye on it, turning it Uh so that it doesn't burn. And that also will make your stew darker with the toasted nuts. Then I will run it through my food processor just for like 10 seconds. I don't want it to be paste. I just want it to be finely chopped. Mm -hmm. You can hand chop it too, for sure. Because this stew has texture. Like when you're eating it, you can kind of feel the texture of the nuts in there. And I like that. Uh Other than that, like prep wise, like I said, I crack open a pomegranate. I do saute onions with the spices on the saute mode in my Instant Pot or if I'm making it stovetop, Mm -hmm. I would do the same thing. I would start with sauteing the onions. Different people use different spices in this dish for sure. I just kind of use my favorite combination, which for a sweet-ish dish to me would be like a little saffron, a little turmeric, a little cinnamon, and a little cardamom. That's what I use. Mm. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cardamom in yours. Interesting. Yeah, almost like, I don't want to say dessert dish, but a sweet and sour dish. Uh Uh-huh. So I'd saute the onions with those favorite spices until they're brown, just, you know, translucent and slightly brown. And then I'll just put everything in there. I buy Lazy Girl Chicken that's already deboned, the breasts, and even small pieces sometimes if I can get a hold of organic chicken. And then it cooks up really quickly. I put that in. I put the pomegranate molasses in. If you have access to fresh pomegranate molasses from a Middle Eastern market, which sometimes I'll find, it's really lovely in this dish. Otherwise, I ordered it online recently. You can get a organic pomegranate molasses is sweetened with dates. Mm-hmm. It's delicious. So I'll put a cup or two of pomegranate molasses, which is the thick, rich kind of essence of the flavor of this dish. And sometimes, like I said, a splash of juice or lemon juice or cranberry juice to make it extra sour. Definitely salt and pepper. I salt things quite a bit. Then I just turn it on to pressure cook for only 15 minutes. Now, when you're using the Instant Pot, that doesn't mean it's 15 minutes total. It takes the time to get it up to the pressure heat. Yeah. I put my chicken in there with everything in the Instant Pot all in one. But 
cook for 15 minutes and then you release the pressure. Uh-huh. I have my rice going in my rice cooker. I, the whole meal takes me an hour start to finish, which is a far cry from my, what I remember my grandma doing. Mm-hmm. And I think also something to know, at least when I compare my recipes to like my mom making them, is I make them a much smaller scale where I know like my mom, if she would make it or maybe your grandmother, when she would make it, would make a much bigger pot or more than one pot of it. So that also will take time. Also more traditional recipes is do they already have the shelled walnuts? Are they actually breaking them out of the shells? If you could buy shelled walnuts or you can even get like ground walnut if you want like a super fast version. But that sounds really convenient, your recipe. I definitely need to try that. Did you brown the chicken first in the Instant Pot or did you just throw it all in at once? I didn't. I threw it all in. And to tell you the truth, the version that comes out of the Instant Pot Mm -hmm. At least with my small pieces of chicken breast tenders, it cooks up really quickly and it turns out kind of like shredded chicken. So it doesn't Uh aesthetically look like the fessenjun that we're used to with the chunks of Uh meat. And actually, I think traditionally it's often made with duck or bone in chicken. Mm -hmm. So that's how I make it. My grandma used to make it with the little tiny meatballs I was remembering the other day. Those are so delicious, especially with little Persian meatballs. They're actually like miniature Mm -hmm. and they look super cute. I do have to say a big cheat that I've used one time making it is I actually bought and used store-bought meatballs Mm -hmm. in my fesenjun. And it was fun. It made it super easy. I'll do that again if I want to cook it and I just, you know, want to cut a few steps. My recipe is a little bit different the way that I make it than yours. I actually do it on the stovetop and I use two pots. And another difference is that my walnuts are ground first, whereas you toast yours first and then you grind them. I grind them first and then toast them in a big pot on like a medium low heat, release a little bit of oils and start getting a little bit more of a darker color. Then after maybe 10 minutes of that, I'll add water to that and let that kind of simmer. And in a separate pot, I'll use a grated onion and then just cook the meat a little bit, like kind of brown those sides a little bit lightly. So I'll kind of brown that, add water to that, and then cook that separately. To the onions, I'll add salt and pepper and turmeric, and then cover it with water and let that cook. And then after maybe half an hour, 40 minutes of them cooking separately, then I combine them. So the broth with the chicken and the walnuts that had a little bit of water, I put them together and I cook them together. At that point, I add the pomegranate molasses. And there's also pomegranate paste that you can use, or you could just use more pomegranate juice. But yeah, I'll usually do the molasses. I'll do like half a cup and then add that into it and then mix it and then a little bit of the pomegranate juice. And then I just let that cook and simmer and the color gets a little bit more golden, a little darker. And then I'll serve that on top of rice with some tadik on the side and maybe a little salad or some must to go with it. That sounds so good. Yes. Moss, which is yogurt, is a nice compliment to a rich dish like Fesson June. Mm-hmm. Oh, sounds yeah. delicious, Bita June. And your version is a little more traditional. I think that's how it was made. Cooking the meat separately in a Dutch oven or some sort and then put together. One other note about Instant Pot recipe is that it is more liquidy. I have to add a little broth because the way Instant Pots work, they need liquid to get to pressure and heat and operate correctly. Uh So at the very end, I have to turn it back to saute mode and stir and steam off some of the liquid. It's more liquidy than doesn't look quite exactly the same, but it saves a little time. Now, in terms of a vegetarian version, you got to play with the portions. I think I would definitely up the amount of walnuts, both just for flavor and for protein and just to kind of thicken it up. Have you tried the vegetarian version yet? I haven't tried a full on 100% vegetarian version. But to be honest, in prep for this episode, I was really thinking about making a version with tofu because I have tofu and I was just trying to mess around with like, should I do it? Unfortunately, I didn't get all the ingredients that I wanted to make that happen. But I was thinking of like, what if we make it like a walnut sauce, Mm. like a sour walnut sauce on top of tofu? That's an interesting alternative. Keep me posted on that, please. Yeah, more to come on that one. I think vegetarian option for that is like, it is very hearty. I don't think you really miss the meat too much if you don't have meat in there. As usual, my mouth is watering. I'm so hungry for fest in June. Yes, me too. 
Great. So now it's time to do our Ask the Beats. And as everybody knows, you can submit your questions to us via Instagram or via email at hello at modernpersianfood.com. And we will feature your question here at the end of every episode. So this week, our question comes from Jordan from San Francisco. And Jordan asked that in Sabzi Khordan, she has previously had fresh walnuts that were rehydrated. And she asked, how can she rehydrate walnuts? I personally love rehydrated walnuts and almonds, and that's a typical place where you can find them at the Sabzi Khordan, which is the fresh herbs that you have at a Persian table. And the way that you rehydrate is just soak it in water overnight. After a few hours, just change the water. And after about probably like 10 to 12 hours, they have a completely different texture to them. You can peel the skin off of the individual walnuts and the individual almonds if you want to do that for like a definitely a very unique experience having a walnut or the almond in what feels like a fresh form. Yeah, exactly. They're easier to chew. They're softer. They're just easier to kind of put into a lohme or a herb sandwich with just little herbs and cheese and nuts in there. And it's lovely. Thanks for asking me that, Jordan. Thank you. So you've been listening to Modern Persian Food with Bita and Bita. Thanks for spending time with us. If you enjoyed what you heard today, consider telling your friends or giving us a good rating on iTunes. You can subscribe to our show for free on your favorite podcasting app or find us online at modernpersianfood.com for recipes and info that we talked about today. Thanks so much. We'd love to hear your thoughts and see you next time.